Mr. Finula Dowling is back into the literary circuit with a new book she titled The Man Who Loved Crocodile, Crocodile Tamer. In this book, we follow the nervous story of Paddy's life, love and longings, and his daughter Gina's struggle to write his story. This body of work is Finula's first major venture into historical fiction and an intriguing example of a family memoir transformed into nigh-on magical realism. Finula Dowling joins us now on Zoom to help us unpack her sixth novel. Finula, very good morning to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Welcome to Morning Live. Thank you. Thank you, Snoopy. Now, first of all, give us a brief uh, description of the book and when the idea to write this book came to you. Um, well, the book was set off by one of the few things I knew about my very mysterious father who never spoke to us about um, what his life had been like mm -hmm. before he met our mother. And that was that his wedding to my mother was nearly interrupted by a crocodile tamer. She, he had been engaged to her and she was very angry that he was marrying my mother and she threatened to come to the church with her crocodiles and they had to post some priests outside um, to stop her from coming in. Uh, she, alternatively, she wanted 600 pounds, and in 1950, I may be wrong, your viewers may contradict me, but that was worth about 400,000 rand she wanted um, to release him from the engagement. Mm -hmm. And I don't know why I didn't, you know, this is, my, as you say, this is my sixth novel, why didn't I make this my first novel, why didn't I take this lovely story, um, but right. I think I needed to be an older person, um, more experienced, mm -hmm. um, to, to understand what had led up to that moment. But it was just fascinating to explore this uh, man who we didn't know much about, and he died um, a very unpleasant death. You know, it was an embarrassing, a shameful death from alcohol and we buried him in an unmarked grave. So in some ways, this work of fiction of mine is a way to resurrect my father and to go back and to make good and to try to understand both how he managed to attract one of the most famous women in the world um, in, in the 1950s. She was Karinga, a famous crocodile tamer, snake charmer. She used to run up um, ladders made of blades um, how did he manage to make such a famous woman fall in love with him and, and why did that love affair end? So that was yeah. the, the origin of the story. Okay, and uh, one of the central characters in the book, Gina, uh, is contemplating on, you know, on how to begin writing her, her novel. And the book, of course, starts with the line, no writing. Tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, this was... Um, Something I wanted to do because, because my father had also wanted to be a published writer, not just an advertising copywriter, which he was. Yes. And so the book alternates chapters which cover the history of my father, the character Paddy, and chapters which cover his daughter Gina, who is like an alter ego of mine, a version of me, and she's trying to write this novel. But unlike me, she hasn't written novels, she hasn't successfully completed a novel before so her struggle is quite intense and i wanted to convey to my readers just what goes on behind the scenes when you're writing a novel um and uh, the struggle uh, the loneliness how you can't have a social life um you just have to get on with this this incredibly difficult task Mm -hmm. What really goes through your mind when you write uh, a fiction novel? I mean, what is it that you think about? Do you just randomly think of facts to put into the book? Or is it simply triggered by uh, an event that happened in your life? I'm often triggered by events in my life, but perhaps more than events, um, there's a problem in my mind. So in okay. this book, the problem was, why did my father die the way he did? Mm -hmm. and, and what was his life like before. Um, I think the, the, uh, the elements of writing fiction are, are several, and they include um, research, especially if you're writing historically, um, research and imagination, and then, of course, very important memory. Um, you, I don't think you can be a writer without a, having a very good memory. Sure. I sure. also keep a, a daily diary in which I note everything about the day, so I can always dig into that for inspiration later. Sure. And at the core of the book, we get to witness the story of, uh, you know, love and family, and we see this in Gina's relationship with her sisters and brothers, yeah? Tell us more about that. 
Yes, well, I, I come from a very large family of first there were four brothers and then came four sisters. Okay. So, um, it, yeah, it's, it's very much a family story. And um, the, the brothers and sisters all have this one problem, and that is um, that they don't really talk about their father. Um, so although they are close to one another and um, kind and compassionate towards one another, there is this, um, and they talk openly about most things, there is this one area of, of near silence, or if he is mentioned, it's just with a kind of an embarrassed laugh. Um, so uh, in, in the novel, what happens is gradually, through a member of the younger generation, um, Gina's niece, she says, where is my father buried? And the uncles have to cudgel their brains to remember where he is buried. And they find this grave, which is unmarked. And eventually, in, in the resolution of the story, the, uh, there is an epitaph erected, there is a headstone erected, um, and there is some kind of um, a feeling of redemption and things having got better and yeah. the past not haunting them so much. And why was it important for Gina, though, to write her father's story? Well, I think because um, Gina is herself wanting to be a writer, and she knew that one of the things that tormented her father was that he had not been able to become a published author. Okay. So she is, in a sense, exploring what it means to be a writer and she's dedicated to finishing this novel, difficult as it is, um, in, his, in his memory. Now help us answer this question. How does a novelist transform biography into fiction? <laughs> it's a lovely question. <laughs> um, I think what you do is you look for what is fictional inside what is factual. Okay. So I think we each have, every single person watching the show this morning, has memories of things in their life that were more like fiction than like fact. And you know that we use these expressions like, oh, so-and-so was larger than life, or truth is stranger than fiction, or oh, you can't make that kind of thing up when we hear a story. So I think we are all aware, in a, in a sense, we are all writing fiction all the time as we uh, cast our mind back over experiences we've had and we think, wow, that, that is worthy of fiction. So what I do when I'm uh, working with a mixture of um, biography and fiction is to always look for the story inside the fact and not let the fact ever hold me down and make me follow its, uh, when it becomes tedious or boring. So always to allow imagination to twist the facts. All right, Fanula, lovely chatting to you. Thank you so much for joining us. Where can you get a copy of this book? Oh, all exclusive books, all major okay. book retailers. Okay, Fanula, have a great day. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Great stuff. That was our Sunday morning guest author, Finula Dowling, and uh, she's been talking to us about a new book titled The Man Who Loved Crocodile Tamers.